This is a continuation of chapter four, and we're going to call it part two, where we look at more rectifier circuits. Here we have a bridge rectifier, and we use four diodes. And notice right away that the diodes that I have drawn are pointing in the vertical direction, whereas the ones that are shown in textbooks, they have the diodes at, at angles. And the reason why is that most software packages for drawing electronic circuits can't draw the devices at angles. Let's begin by using our transformer formula to find the voltage on the secondary. If we begin with the primary at 120 and we go through the formula, we see that the secondary voltage is 15 volts. We continue by taking the formula for voltage RMS and rearranging it so as to find the peak voltage. In this case, 15 volts divided by 0 0.707 means that the peak voltage is 21.2 volts. The voltage that actually gets delivered to the load, we're going to call V out. And it's found by taking the peak minus two diode drops. So the voltage out is equal to 19.8 volts. And then we go ahead and find voltage DC by taking two times the peak, or V out, and dividing by pi. So the actual voltage DC is 12.6 volts. The advantage of using a bridge rectifier is that we use the full secondary windings, as you can see, and also, which means that the voltage output is higher and also the DC voltage is higher. Let's return to a very simple halfway rectifier circuit with only one diode, but this time we will insert a capacitor. We follow the same procedure using the transformer formula to come up with peak voltage and then subtract one diode drop. So the voltage delivered to the load, V out, is actually 20.5 volts. The capacitor will charge up to 20.5 volts and it'll slowly discharge. And in the process, we have a DC level, more of a straight line with a ripple voltage, which we call V ripple. The size of the ripple voltage depends on how much current is drawn by the load. For that reason, we calculate the load current, in this case 20.5 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms, and it equals 2.05 milliamps. We can calculate the ripple voltage with the formula shown, which says that it's the maximum current divided by the frequency times the capacitance, in this case 2.05 milliamps divided by 60 hertz times 47 microfarad, and it equals 727 millivolts peak to peak. That's a considerable number. And the lesson to be learned is that to improve or to lessen the ripple and to improve the DC, we need more and more capacitance or to reduce the current delivered through the load. To further improve our DC level, let's go back to our bridge rectifier circuit and insert a very large capacitor, 470 microfarad. Once again, we calculate secondary voltage and then we calculate peak voltage and then we calculate V out, this time with two diode drops, for a total of 17.1 volts. We calculate the maximum current as 17.1 volts divided by one kilo ohm, 17.1 milliamps. Notice that this time when we calculate ripple voltage, the frequency is 120 hertz, and it's because we're using a full rectifier where we have two little humps, which means that the frequency is no longer 60 hertz, but 120 hertz. In any case, we calculate Ripple voltage in this case is 303 millivolts peak to peak. So once again, with the bridge rectifier, we have higher voltage, more current, but the ripple voltage is less than the previous circuit, and that's because the capacitor is so much bigger.